Hey guys and welcome to another video as part of our clutter bug series. Today is questions and answers and I want to thank you because I got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of questions from you guys. We are jumping right in. Kate the Great asked something that basically most of you asked and that is what if you're like two bugs. What if you're a combination of all four bugs? I'm gonna put what she put here because I'm gonna, I'm paraphrasing, but you get the idea. Basically she's asking, what if you're a combination of more than one bug? So my answer is of course you can be more than one clutter bug, especially in different areas in your home. But I want to remind you not to look at how your space looks and just like judge yourself based on that. Any bug can be messy. Crickets can be messy. Butterflies can be neat and tidy. It's not about that. It's about what organizing system works best for you, whether you need it to be visual and really simple, or you need it to be sort of hidden away and complicated. That's what we're getting at here. Any bug can be messy. I want you to think about the systems that work for you. Take a look at your home and look at what system is like perpetually staying organized. And odds are it's because that system works for you. The second most popular question I got is from our Francis and a lot of you guys, and it's how to get different combos to work together. What if you have a lot of different bugs living in one house? Or what if you're like, why isn't my spouse picking up after themselves? And they're a completely different style. What I really suggest here is always defaulting to the simple. Now I might be biased, because I'm a ladybug and I need those simple systems, but I would suggest really kind of defaulting when it's a shared space to the easiest solution. And if you have a visual organizer in your home, really kind of defaulting to accommodate that visual organizer. Now you don't have to have everything out on display. You can do this by having labels, right? So labels gives you that visual reminder of what's in a container that's really going to be critical to motivating that person to put it away. Don't have containers with lids. <laughs> lids are terrible. And invest in some hooks instead of, you know, having to open a closet, get out the hanger, hang your coat on it and hang it back. There are some of us that just aren't going to do that. Like me. So having some hooks even inside your closet or on the back of the door or in your entranceway is really going to eliminate that, I guess, piles of stuff, clothing, things laying around if you're setting up really simple visual solutions. I just made a really quick little ebook for you guys. It's only 30 pages long. It's a free ebook that you can download. I'm gonna put the link below. And this kind of breaks it down a little bit further with like each combo. So say you're a cricket and a butterfly. Some quick tips of what you can do to work together. And you can download that. Again, I'm gonna put the link below. So Sue asked another really popular question that I get all the time and it's not even about your style it's how do you get the rest of the family on board if you're living with people who are just dropping their crap everywhere and never picking up after themselves and you've been nagging and trying everything how do you get them to do it this is not an easy answer but here's what i'm going to suggest first you lead by example and that means really training yourself first to put things away as you go remember the one minute rule if you you're making a sandwich, put the stuff back in the fridge, put your plate when you're done directly into the dishwasher. If you don't have a dishwasher, fill up the sink with soapy water and plop your dishes through the day into there. It's about doing things if they take a minute or less immediately and training yourself to do that. It doesn't take long to do. Now you can lead by example. You can gently nudge people to follow your example. There's two kinds of leaders. There's people who lead with a stick poking you in the back, and there's people who lead with a carrot. I really recommend the carrot approach. So the stick would be like nagging, complaining, forcing, ultimatums, and the carrot would be positive reinforcement. Give them a cookie, congratulate them when they do the small little tasks, and make it really easy for them. If your teenager is taking off their clothes and throwing them on a pile on the floor, and you're like, why aren't you putting them in the hamper? Put the hamper exactly where they throw them on the floor, and odds are they're gonna end up in the hamper. It isn't ideal, I get it, but eventually you can slowly move that hamper back into the corner, but this works. It works for my five-year-old, it works for my husband, it works for everyone. Lead with carrots, my friends, and really train them like they're puppies. The other thing we do that really works for kids and me, let's be honest, it works for me, is have quick 
tidy up times throughout the day. Not just once a week or once at the end of each day, but all throughout the day, like five minute tidy. So before every meal, I say to my kids, dinner's in five minutes, quickly clean your room. And that way it's never overwhelming. Like before snacks, they have to tidy up. Before lunch, they have to tidy up. Multiple times throughout the day, I'm reminding them just like, hey, it's tidy up time, you guys. And that way it's never gonna take them more than five minutes to accomplish because they haven't had hours and hours worth of mess to pick up. It's a really effective way of staying on top of things, not just for your kids, but for you as well. So set a reminder in your phone every three hours to do a quick five minute tidy, especially if you're like me and you have the tendency to like leave crap out as you go. It's a really good reminder and it's setting a habit for you to start picking up after yourself on a regular basis. Last but not least, the question I get all the time is how do you actually sort and how do you macro sort and what do those categories look like and where do you start? And I have so much crap and I have no idea what to do. Listen, it's okay. It's gonna be okay. Here's what I want you to do. If you have a pile somewhere, I want you to grab some empty boxes, laundry, hampers, anything like big Rubbermaid totes, it really doesn't matter. And I want you to start sorting that pile into like huge categories. So like if it's paper, put it in a paper pile. If it's bathroom products, put it in one bathroom product pile. Doesn't matter if it's cough syrup or band-aids or you know vitamins. We're, we're macro sorting. We're throwing it all together in one category. We can go down and fine tune it later. Sometimes we get so caught up in the details, so caught up in like the micro part of organization that we just make piles everywhere. And then what have we done? <laughs> we've like spent three hours and we've got a lot of little piles everywhere. That doesn't work. And it just creates more mess and more headache and makes you feel discouraged. Macro organizing can like, you, at least you've accomplished something. At least you've made the first step and we can go back and micro organize that later. So if you're tackling a pile, that's what I want you to do. I want you to start with the big sort and then find a home for that big sort somewhere, somewhere. Probably the best place is where you use that stuff. So if you've got a big pile of bathroom products, you should probably be stored in your bathroom. And if you're like, I don't have space in my bathroom for this huge amount of bathroom products. Sorry guys, you got too many bathroom products and you're gonna have to purge some of them. Work with the space you have today. It doesn't matter if someday you're gonna build, buy a bigger house. It doesn't matter if the stuff costs money. It doesn't matter. If you don't have the room for it, you don't have the room for it. So macro sort, then find a home, then purge the excess. And that is the secret to getting organized. So what are you waiting for? Grab a garbage bag, start in your master bedroom or with a pile that's bothering you or make your bed, do a load of laundry, whatever it is right now, shut the computer off. Let's get started right now. Together, it's just a little bit every day that we can do that can bring us closer to clean and clutter free. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Hey, so thanks so much for those of you who have stayed to the end. So as you guys know, I've been like doing some weird crap this this year, 2018, is January over yet? I have been on this journey of self-discovery and, you know, personal development and I've been going to like things and putting myself out there and I tried medication for ADHD because, you know, I have it and uh, it did not work out so well. Um, I felt like, you know, you know that movie Limitless when they take a pill and they're like, I can do anything. And the guy's like, uh, getting all this stuff accomplished and he's super smart. So I felt that when I took it, I started taking Ritalin and it was only 20 <laughs> like milligrams. So it was like, my doctor's like, this is what we put babies on, not babies, but children. That's the dosage for them. And I was high as a kite. I was like, woo, I can do, I was like, I'm hyper enough. And that put me on like a freaking, I was like, bah! I was spun. And I was getting a little bit more done, but only because I was working like 24 seven. I wasn't actually that much more focused. I was just a maniac, like some sort of rabbit spider monkey on speed kind of crazy. So I stopped taking that. I'm gonna consider maybe trying something else or maybe just be okay with the fact that I'm hyper and I have no attention and I'm never gonna be a perfectionist and I'm never gonna put out great quality for you guys and I'm never gonna like write a book that's good or you know I'm gonna just I'm just gonna continue to throw enough cheese at the wall throw cheese slices at the wall and maybe one or two of them are stick that's that's what I'm doing in life here and I fail a lot 
because I don't, um, yeah, I just don't, I don't stop and uh, <laughs> test things before I launch them live and, and I'm like here, there, everywhere, here, there, everywhere. It's hard to really do anything well when you're not sitting still long enough to accomplish anything. Uh, so that's me and that's my thing that's going on. And I will keep you posted in my ADHD journey as I look for solutions. Just I'm spinning over here, like in a circle, like a lunatic. I'll see you next time.